Hello. How? Hola. I am your King President, Godfather, Chief Champ Vinci, Dr. Champ, the King, Nicholas Lee Sutton. Running for mayor here in Houston, that's who most of this video will be going out to. Yeah, also looking to run for President of the United States. Um, one of the things I've noticed, whether campaigning or uh, just trying to run my business in this town or other regions um, around Georgia, is that they have created so many laws that by the time you attempt to do anything, there is always some law just trying to sit there and trying to bounce back against you. And not only that, they've then trained, um, I guess, the culture of what a city hall has been like and what um, political people of those towns uh, have been cultured into uh, behaving in a manner that is not about raising up your community. Uh, now, I want to say a couple things out front. Is One is when we look at these city of Houston emails, it says .com rather than .gov. So, you can look at that one or two ways. You can look at it as, oh, so we are supposed to do commerce together and we are supposed to make money together. At the same time, a lot of people even say that, uh, or I've heard some people say that this election that we're paying money and advertising for, that there's falsifications to it, that they're actually trying to annex us out of this area um, and are trying to be tricky about it and trying to make people look foolish about it anyway. So uh, you've heard about election frauds on TV and such, yet they're trying to say that, uh, some people are trying to say that all this work that we're putting into it is false. And so then we look at the city of Houston emails and they're not .govs. So that's interesting. I'm not upset about that or anything like that. Yet it does say .com. Um, so I think that means commerce. I could be wrong about that or communicate. It. I see it as commerce um, as the ability to do that. It may stand for something else out there yet. If it doesn't say .gov, then what we are looking at is a commercial business or uh, the way I see it right there. So, um, one of the things I've noticed is that most of the people that I've met, um, some have lied to me, some have been rude, some have tried to frame me, and some have been extremely kind and wonderful. Yet, even those that were into the foolishness of the first few things I mentioned right there, most of them were attached to some culture or some church or some political party or some culture of behavior that they almost felt like that's what they're supposed to do. It's just ruin any good business idea you can, ruin anything you can, and nobody ever works together, and it's, a, and it's two or three people or five people or 12 people in a town that get to make some money and while fooling everyone else. And, you know, in times of desperation or business is business or it is what it is, you know, those kind of sayings that often are very true. Yet in today's times, we have a way that if we work together or use ideas um, some people may be wanting to sell their land or rezone it to something. Yet if we unite this land with as few of people as there are in this town and use it for something that makes money, then that's the best way to run a town is that instead of just one person making money, now we can't, we can't, uh, uh, necessarily force, I guess you could vote force things into action, yet we don't want to necessarily force people to do something smarter with their land or more financially blessed, yet I think that's a pretty easy conversation to have with them, is they may be making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a land sale, but they may make that um, every couple months um, by using that land for a combined opportunity to make money, whether it be through uh, neurological brain research with all and resetting the entire medical system, natural medicines, or whether it be through the casino idea. And that's what I'm looking at with the new Hoshton is, in, is that the rules that everybody's been following, right? The problem with changing a lot of rules is that those that have been following the old rules and using them wrong, um, in which I've noticed that the easiest thing to do in, in this town or in anywhere in the United States is to do something wrong because there's a law against everything. And so it's not to say that, hey, you've done something wrong and nobody else has. No, everybody's done something wrong. So when you look at it that way and you see people purposely lying to you, um, and, and some being okay, but some purposely lying, we understand this is going on. And then you have to ask yourself why? 
you know, is it a pure dislike for me and a few other people, or is it, even if that's the case, um, then that, that's, uh, that's a hate crime at that point in time. Um, there must be some judgment against me that creates that to be a hate crime. And so then the next thing that, which I think is more common sense is that the leadership isn't there. And sometimes you just don't have, you know, everybody may be a pretty good leader, but sometimes you just don't have that great leader. And that's exactly who I am and what I've studied and what I intend to do. And so when I look at everyone involved in this, uh, um, campaigns, uh, the hopeful real elections, um, and hopefully preparing us to all move up and forward into the national elections in the coming year. Um, in order to do so, so that we're not tripping over the local um, lack of leadership or the leadership of undercutting people at all points in time, uh, it, it almost seems like we need to uh, a new Hoshton or a new Houston. Uh, even I like to call it Hoshton, St. Nicholas, but people argue about that forever. But anyways... And what I'm saying is like when what the United States or the early settlers were dealing with in Europe was this exact same thing is they had a bunch of strong people and they were not getting us work. They were overtaxing us. If we would go to work, they would try to control us. No matter what we did, they would put us in jail. So we came to America and created the New England states. And then that became into uh the colonies and into the United States as we know it now. And so as war is being conducted all around the world from the same failures of what I'm speaking about locally and nationally of, of instead of working together to make money together, when you separate yourselves, then people tend to do way more corruption. And when it's unfair to people, that's what leads you to lawsuits and criminal charges and those kind of things. If we are just running a new Houston or a new tribe government that we can create here, and we are running that, and our foundation is on making money and making profits and keeping people as healthy as we can to use profits and new sciences to keep people healthy as our foundation, then as we work together, then that is not corruption. What makes something corruption is the fact that you're going around and nagging everyone and bothering everyone else. You see what I'm saying? Like when you go around and you try to take away from my business or the next business or the next business or the next business, and that's kind of been what they've taught females um, to do in this world, in the political world, is anywhere you can see someone making money, mess it up. And it's just, I don't think that's a natural female trait. I don't. I think naturally females want to work together to make money. Yet for some reason, the culture sure twisted um, tries to, as much as it tries to weaken men, it tries to control the women into being something negative that doesn't want to work along with people. And it tries to weaken the men at the same time. It's the double twist of how you ruin a strong country or a strong government. So when I'm speaking of the new Hoshin, it, it's not, you know, some people may be out there. Maybe there are some bad people still on the city council. I don't know. Um, yet the way I see it is, is maybe they were having to do things they were having in a negative, what others would call corruption or illegalities or a political framework or political interference. I can be totally wrong. Maybe some of them are just evil. That is an opportunity. Yet, um, in a more productive way, the way I see it from a leadership role is uh, most people are usually fighting over money and lack of leadership to unify people around something. And when you unify people around something that is not as emotional as religion or as skin color or as gender or as sex choice. Those, those are all very emotional things for the human being. And when you gather people around something that actually helps them, like money and how their brain and body works, or how if people aren't interested in that part of it, there are plenty of people around the world that are interested in it, and you will still make money on it by loving this man and allowing us to set up uh, science, neurological research, and new medicines, cannabis. Uh, uh, a lot of people like the microdosing of mushrooms. And I I've told the medical world, and I can prove to them, that in terms of mental health, they've been reverse diagnosing people and giving the prescriptions backwards. So all of this political kidnapping and all of this 
putting people in mental health uh, like spots. For instance, uh, I just spoke to Officer Hill. I saved everybody's signs. They were going to be thrown away, and they were going to take away your money for that. You're welcome. And he was cool about that. And he told me that people just email him. And so, for instance, all the people when I sent a bunch of emails when there was a bunch of danger um, to City Hall, and they forwarded them to the Houston Police Department. I went up to the graveyard to read my Bible and pray. A few minutes later, Bradbury came up there and they hauled me off to a mental health hospital because I sent what they said was too many emails. And so I got taken to a mental health hospital for sending emails reporting terrorism, both of infiltrated people into local, regional, national, international government. So one of the greatest reports of all time I sent in. And they ended up conducting the anti-terror strikes, and from everything we can tell, it worked. So now that Officer Hill says that everybody's just emailing him, and I've got him included on here, and Officer Hill, so you know, we'll call this fiction until it comes true, so that way nobody, I'm not threatening or anything like that. You always got to cover every every zone. Yet, you got to think about this. When you say the Pledge of Allegiance in a little while uh, later on, if you were like, and justice for all, okay, well, I got taken to the mental hospital for sending emails, too many emails. So that means if everybody's sending emails, that means justice for you as well. Now, do all of you want to be hauled off to the mental hospital right now because you sent emails? Because you're excited about helping or you're fired up about trying to make something happen because you were a born leader? So you got to think about these things that what, you know, what, uh, do you really want to continue the way that the political world, and we can make a change here in this area that people will love around the United States. And when I move up, I plan on bringing everyone with me. So when I talk about a new Houston, 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 we'll, we'll call it Houston and Houston because I'm St. Nicholas. Ho, 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 Houston. So when we talk about that, you got to look at it. Everyone's broken the laws and mistreated somebody else, which was the culture. Yet, if that keeps up, we all know where that ends up. Not good. Have you seen the Israel-Hamas wars? It's dangerous to do that to people. Okay? Bad, 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 bad. Bad behavior, everybody. Now, a new city council, when you look at who would be guilty of enabling all this to occur, and it would be everyone that works at City Hall and the police station and every other place. Now, I am your neighbor. I actually like all of you. Yet, when we look at what you are doing as a citizen, uh, civilian, and a candidate, when I look at this as from a leadership role, and I look at how many mistakes they've made and how many rules they've broken, that they will either t most naturally do one of two things. They will either once you are elected, try to continue to sabotage you so you don't call them out about all their sabotaging, or they will um, try to go against a lot of the things you're doing so that in the past, people not working together, if they go against somebody that wants to unify things, they believe naturally that I would be concerned about their corruption of the past. When you are focused as a leader like I am on making everybody more money and improving the uh, health of every human, then those corrupt deals of the past, it's better for to let me know about them so I can help the families that were victimized during that time. And so to me, it's less about calling anybody out on corruption and just creating something totally new. And when you have a city council and police officers, for instance, if Hill wants to treat everybody with justice and equality, that means all of you that wrote emails have to go to mental health jail. Is that what I'm hoping for? No. What I'm hoping for is what I speak about in terms of leadership. You have to find, found F-O-U-N-D, found or to establish a place on money and human health in a good way. Not the study of everybody's mental disorders. That's one of the most creepy, ridiculous, and failing ideas of all time. Look, somebody's not doing well. It's their fault. Okay, where's the leadership? Where's the attention to new weapons going against us? And I brought the attention for all of the things that are hurting us forward. And so 
all of the past leadership and their children and their relatives and the churches all used a form of false care of trying to put people, I think you need some help. And they take you in a scary cop car to a scary hospital. In the hospital, you, you feel electrocution all through the place. And then they take you, stay there for three days, and they might put you in the prison part of the hospital and leave you in there and don't let you talk to anybody and take your clothes and make you get naked and examine you and send in false mass people to try to question you and try to trip you up as if I don't know what I'm talking about. And then they send you off to another place for three to five to seven days anywhere around Georgia or maybe even into another place. And in that place at night when you're in there, they use cameras that hit you in your forehead, sending you images to your head. And, and it's the craziest thing ever. For what? for alerting the city council and for letting the police department know that people are in the area trying to kill them that are hurting our family, that are hurting the citizens, that are hurting all of the city council in the radiation in the buildings and everything else they've been living through. So you got to think about this. When you have a cancel culture, it's like the reverse of the boy who cried wolf. Okay, so what would be worse than the boy who cried wolf? Would be the man who told the truth, the boy who kept trying to save everybody's lives, and everybody then trying to somehow get in the, get in the way of the boy and the man who told truth. Truth, not saying, oh, we will need to know everything about you. Oh, that's the truth. We know what you did one time. No, that's evil. That's stupidity. That's the act of darkness when that's all people do is run around and do that. So what we have is a world and a city and a region that very few people capitalize on a person that tells the truth. From social media cutting people's voices off, standing up against viruses and vaccines that weren't working, to uh, to cancel culture, to hacking our phones, to spying on us. And for what good? While, they, while our secret services and city councils were trying to spy and find ways to cancel us, guess what was happening? People were hurting them and hurting us. Same thing that happened in 9-11. Same thing that happened January 6th. The FBI, CIA, city councils, and police are all looking into their locals and trying to learn, oh, what are they doing? Are they saying anything about sex? Are they, are they saying anything about uh, that the government's lying? Keep an eye and then the FDA's got you looking. Is anybody online saying anything against corona vaccines? Like, so while all the city is looking at their citizens, our country gets attacked and taken over. It's almost like a war move of the enemies is to make the people that are supposed to take care of you become addicted to trying to cancel you. So to me, the way to save people in that format is to create a new host and to create a new city council. Now, that doesn't mean we necessarily have to get rid of everybody. Um, we might just reassign them to a better place. They might even make a little bit more money. Or we need to be on the forefront with the dangers that I just mentioned, how easily we can be distracted about trying to take away from each other. Who sides over there? Who sides over there? Good God Almighty. The truth of the matter is we need everyone that is, that wants to participate and I don't know that many people on the ballot, so that's a pretty uh, trustworthy thing for me to say, is that we need everyone that has been on the city council. We need everyone that is trying to be on the city council. We need, I mean, anything could happen. We, it, we, what if there's a terror alert, or what if somebody needs a mayor at 6 a.m.? What if somebody needs one at 10 p.m.? What if somebody needs, you know, people around the clock? That if something happens, we have a way to alert our citizens and our leaders. So it's almost like you need, you almost need in a world that is as dangerous as it is, you almost need three of each position. And, and you know, it's not that people have to stay up all night to do that. Yet, you know, if you need to make a phone call of something if something's crazy and going on or somebody's coming to hurt your council or your government, think about January 6th. Trump was telling them they are coming 
to invade. And Trump was telling his people to protest, but Trump was telling Nancy Pelosi then too, you need to get the National Guard ready because people are killing and coming after the leadership of towns, police, council, good doctors, good business people, good everything else. Okay, and then they pollute your town with a virus of only looking to cancel people. Okay, so every time we're not working together, and if you're a spy trying to take over this town or something else, and you see this town running around not working together, oh my gosh, you're just setting yourself up to be taken over so quickly and so easily. When you reset Houston into a tribe, it starts as a core, okay? It starts as a core. And you have to understand we need something for a tribe to live for. Even, like, I, I'm not going to say there's anything greater than God, but something more tangible than God or something tangible with God's name on it, like money. You can't set a country up on justice for all because everybody, there's too many rules. Everybody's going to break a rule. That means everybody's going to be chasing each other. You're breaking a rule. You're breaking a rule. You're breaking a rule, which was the disease of the Bible. Look, that person sinning. Look, that person sinning. Look, that person sinning. And meanwhile, Jesus is like, I can save people and heal them, but all they do, all their governments are focused on catching people for making, saving people signs and, you know, what is that man doing down the street? Does he look like he has a mental disorder? Oh, is he a sinner? Remember that sin he did? And the whole time, it's like all of your lives, I can give you a better chance of living, a better chance of living today, a living a healthier today, making more money by following the concepts that I give to you. And that's how I've been chased and looked at. So no matter what a person has done, what do you bring to the table that can help us? And, and in this way of, of, of total, I mean, it's 60, we're talking about 60 or 80 years of anti-strong, uh, anti-smart leadership. And that's not to say the people that were elected were not smart. Yet they began to make rules about how to cancel people. Like, what are you talking about? What kind of, uh, uh, what kind of community is that? What kind of family is that? What kind of neighborhood is that that doesn't want to stand up for each other? That when you see someone down, you want them hauled off to a hospital? Are you kidding me? That should be the last thing we should do as a community. That is a direct sign of a failure of leadership, which is typically a direct sign of rules that don't make sense. For instance, right now, uh, there is not enough money made in order to justify the costs that are being paid to rent City Hall from the numbers I've seen. I could have misread the numbers, uh, yet let's move forward on this. What I've noticed about the pay of everyone and the work that's needed and the actual time that needs to be put in and into this, the pay is not good. It needs to be improved. Now, to improve pay without a plan to help pay for that would be ignorant, in my opinion. It would still be justified because we need the leadership. Yet, what we are looking at is the problem with politics here and around the United States is the fact that they put a glass ceiling over politicians' heads. Rather than tying the politician's pocket and wallet to the people of its area. For instance, if we need to raise the salaries across the board and we need to, if people don't have time to do a full roll or they're making money other ways, yet listen, I'm, I'm giving my all to this. And at the same time, I have another, you know, I have another business and a couple other businesses I'm working on. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of what businesses do you all have and how can we all together make all of our businesses more money, create something, I believe a casino, and it even looks like casino lights up there. A lot of people like that idea. I've yet to have anyone, now if somebody said, I don't know if you'll get everybody in this town to agree with that. Well, one thing everybody agrees with is almost all of us are poor and we're tired of it. So if somebody's going to send you enough money in the mail to pay your rent, your power, and your electricity, uh, uh, sorry, rent, power, sorry, I said the same thing twice, and water, and you can get a job by being a local, and the better that casino does, the better we all do, and then we hold a grip on that and make that our kind of our uh, kind of copyright, 
Um, that's the wrong word, uh, yet our way to be able to rebuild things. And at this point in time, when you take a city council and police and everybody, like, uh, like I almost feel like Officer Hill needs a tip today. Like, I, I don't think you can tip cops, but if you could, I think he deserves a tip today. He realized I was doing the right thing based on the crazy DOT taking everybody's signs. And I saw 50 or 60 of Michael Beck's and Debbie Miller's signs disappear overnight. And then Hill told me that that's what they were doing. They were picking them up and making them disappear. And I didn't want to see, you know, he was nice enough to tell me that. And then so I set up a parking lot for everybody over here at the new city hall. Because over here in my yard and in my house, most of the time, about 98% of the time, I and we can come to the war campaign room and we can do fiction if you want to do it. But it's amazing how good fiction in a really close to truth way will fix things and help people do what needs to happen. The fiction of a government is the idea that you don't want the government to make money for its people and you don't want the people running the government to make extra money for making you money. And every law is against that. Look at the Trump uh, uh, Trump and um, Biden trials for making money. Why is it that they have to go behind everybody's backs to make the money? Because it's not legal in the rules to make the money. So what do we do? We make it the core and the foundation of the government. Like if you want to build a castle, or I mean, you might build some underground, but if you want to build a castle, do you want your castle to go up? Yes. Then you have to found it on it being a castle. This whole thing about liberty and justice for all is nothing more than a, uh, a cat and mouse chase all the time in every rule that's made. And that's why off of the pledge we do to the allegiance of, hey, everybody, let's try to make sure we know what everybody else is doing wrong all the time. Rather than saying, why don't we create something good and use your skills and we make money. And if somebody's not doing well, we have a positive way of helping them get better. And then through the through the neuroscience and these other kind of things, rather than opposed to a scary, uh, a scary trip to the hospital, a scary trip in... Uh, uh, in a police car or a lonely, scary place, and then you end up on a pill made of heroin. So that's, you know, nobody ever wants to talk about like, oh, we think that person needs help. The odds of them leaving on something like an SSRI, which the FDA voted zero yes and 12 no to that, and they still put SSRIs out. They ruin your, uh, uh, they ruin so much of your body, it kind of chokes you out. It's like slowly being choked out over time. And that gives you a little bit of feeling a little bit better, but it makes you sit still because they don't want anybody moving too fast. And so you end up on something that's terrible for you or a heroin uh, pill when neurologically, that's not what you need. Financially, that's not what you need. You're low on money, so take a man out, who, out of the business world for a week while he's already low on money and you think he's going to be happy when he comes out and you've just taken him away from this world for three to seven days? Now that's criminal to do that to people. That's unethical, it's immoral, it's ungodly, it's unjust, it's despicable, it's crime wars, it's ev uh, war crimes, it's everything that you can think of is the filthiness to treat your people like that. Now, so the new city council uh, probably needs some rearrangements and maybe some like you know, we'll lower them down a few positions or something, yet they probably make more money and have less pressure that uh, the whole world's going to crumble on their heads for uh, the things that they've done. And I'm not saying that to be mean to them because there was plenty of, there were, it, I, as far as I, the best, the gift I will give everyone is I guess everyone was trying to do their best in the conditions that they were in. Okay, there's a lot of other circumstances. You all didn't have me helping you out. You didn't have a lot of other things helping you out at that point in time. And it took you a little bit to be able to adjust and you're all doing a great job from that. So the way I see it is it's more of a story of survival underneath bad rules and unfair pay, pay grades and a foundation altogether that's focused on the wrong thing. Yes, as an individual, focusing on God is great. Yes, you don't want unjust things happen to, happening to you. Yes, uh, personally, you want liberty and freedom. Yet, systematically, what we actually need instead of that imaginary stuff is money 
and health. Okay, you have money and health and a system that looks out for each other and protects people in town. Like if you could tip, tip Officer Hill today, we should tip him. Like, good job, Hill. You did the right thing. And that boy is wonderful. He heard of the problem. He saved people a lot of money. And not only that, he built a new city hall parking lot over here. That's what I built out in my yard. I had a parking spot for everybody that had a sign that was about to be stolen from them. So when other people want to say, oh, that person's doing bad, and you look... And the people that are wagging their fingers saying someone's doing bad, it's usually those people that are doing bad. And, and so what did I do when they thought, well, I guess they, I don't think anybody thought I was doing something bad. I was just following the rules. It was an order by Officer Hill. And every one of the signs that I helped with was in a place that based on the laws and the codes and even more than that, Officer Hill's rules even even those rules that he had given me, all those signs were in an illegal place. Did I care they were in an illegal place? No. Was I even stubborn like, well, if they can't do it, I can't do it. A little bit in my head, but not in my actions. And then I was like, well, that's what the rules and this person says and this person. So is there something I can do with all of those rules to celebrate everybody and to let them know that I love them and that we need every single one of you and we need a change to the whole system to help those that were before us, to help help those of us entering and to help everyone. And just for, I mean, I don't know what more peace of mind uh, we could use in this world than to know that our bills will be paid. Um, uh, and from that point, then people are almost on their own, you know, like you want to look out for your town to make your money grow. Yet when you have city council jobs that they don't make enough money, and then let's say one of their fathers or one of their preacher groups or one of their church groups wanted to, let's just use a story that's similar to mine or maybe even accurate, and wanted to steal my neurotechnologies, right? And so, in other words, somebody on the city hall, their fa they can't make money by working with me, but if they work back door with their dad or their uncles or their uncles stealing my neurotechnologies, then at that point in time, they can make more money by stealing my neurotechnologies. You see what I'm saying? And so if they're not allowed to create something that they can make more money by being a city call, hall council person, then almost their only way of this area's thinking is steal it from them and frame them. And you, you start to think about what rules, you know, some people may just be bad like that, all right? Yet what rules is it that push people to that place? And it's a dual, uh, it's several rules. One of them, that the city council can't make commission for making uh, their town and their people in their town money. That's the number one thing. And that government officials can't do that. Like, that should be exactly what they are doing, actually. Not running around in law and order for all and justice for all. Uh, that just comes back to bite everybody in the butt. Everybody. And like that format of theology is uh, like there was the Stone Age, the cavemen and women hitting each other with sticks, and then humans developed, and then they underdeveloped again back to justice for all. We're going to catch you. Like, can we try to make money together? Can there be a different focus? Um, so uh, these uh, things that these ideas and way people have had to survive due to government rules, I'll give everybody every excuse I can right now. Yet once you have a better way and you choose not to do that, then that sure makes all of, uh, of those forms of people look bad. Okay, and then one of the final things I'm going to close on right now um, is they have the uh, meetings tonight. Um, to go over zoning and to go, you know, typical town, uh, I would assume, typical um, town hall forms of meetings, maybe a little bit more advanced. A lot of that usually probably just happens in an office somewhere, um, but they are opening it up to the public. And so when you look at this, again, I was taken to a mental health hospital for reporting true deathly, slow death, medium death, and quick death threats to our government, our police, and everybody in this town and region and around the United States. So if you've wondered what, uh, why I've been mistreated for the past five years, it's a combination of the things that I've shared with you. Multi-billion dollar technology groups, trillion dollar um, opportunities in other areas that I bring to the table. So that makes me a prime suspect for people to want to frame and steal from. 
Yet then the other part of it is that the rules and the laws of the people that keep doing that. So that they actually would make more money by working with me than they would by stealing from me. Because once you start stealing from people, then, you know, God will have his wars. Um, and so what we noticed is, let's say I sent 13 pages that day. All right. Well, when I go to read the uh, zoning rules, um, it's a 99 page document. Okay. A 100 page book. All right, so if you can't send emails that are that long, then why are the proposals that long? Talk about reading fatigue. Talk about uh, talk about everything, and I read just fine, yet you're talking, if we got to read 99 pages, that's w the number one way where corruption either direction will occur. It, when it has to be 99 pages for everybody to read, people aren't going to read all that. A few might. Right. And then once you read it, it's like, how much, how much reading comprehension do you have? It is a trick of the trade to have these really long documents when you can have a video that says, Hey, I'm such and such. And I want to use this piece of property over here and this piece of property. And you can walk around the property with your video camera and we can say, maybe try to keep it 10, 15 minutes, 30, under an hour. If you're doing a big project and with a video camera, you can walk your community through what it is you're wanting to do. So let's say it's someone with a good idea and they do all that long 99 page document, a short book, and they do a short book for everybody to read while they don't get paid to read it. And um, those people could have just done a video and it would have been a whole, a whole lot easier for everybody to understand. Um, yet in this process, what is occurring is the guaranteed corruption, one direction or the other. Either the people will guaranteedly get corrupted because they're not going to get all the information, and even if they read it all, uh, it's so much information you would have to read it five or six times for most people in order and take your notes and go back and remember, then go search and do this. And, you know, hello, welcome to the technology age. So, to back up what I'm saying is why I'm sending a video right now. Um, is that if I were to type this out into an email, um, another thing is if you get an email from me for whatever reason, when I'm doing good things, autocorrect changes my words to silly things. Like I was saying, I wanted to put parking spots for everyone last night and it changed it into Peking. Like a Chinese restaurant would be good right here too. I do like, I do like some Chinese yet. Uh, if you see an email from me, that's that's the kind of nonsense that I've been put through. It's even uh, in my typing. Um, I will type something, send it, go back and read it, and there'll be like four words that were correct when I read it prior. So um, if that happens, just bear with me. I will try to uh, check on that more. So again, a uh, recap is we need a new hosting. That's how you fix things. And we need a new focus for it to be on money and human health performance and protection. Money first, human health and performance second, because if you have healthy people, you stand a chance. And always, safety third, protection third. Um, we need a group of people that isn't looking around for its citizens that if they see something coming to the area, you may be buzzing one of your citizens and saying, hey champ, uh, take a look out your window over there, see if you see something up in the sky. Does it, what does that look like to you? Or Hey, uh, uh, somebody's on your street, champ. Make sure everything's okay over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of like disliking your people, treating it like a tribe. And a tribe is more like a family that works together. Um, and in this world, historically, those with the best militaries and those with the best fighting forces and those who make money for their people and those who have the best health win the wars and have the best lives. So this is your roundup from the professor. King President Godfather, Chief Chan Vinci, and I am your King President Godfather, Chief Chan Vinci. So if you don't have another reason to follow what we're doing, then that's a good reason. You vote for me is a vote for all of you. A vote for me is a raise for all of you. A vote for me is a safer community. A vote for me is a commission-based government. A vote for me is a new government based on making money, improving people's health, Having the research, and when I say improving people's health, that means we provide the research for the rest of the world on how health should work, and then protection. 
Look at how much money even like the terrorists over in Iran get. They'll get like $6 billion because they're so scary. So instead of like trying to scare each other in this town and picking on each other in this town, when you, it makes you less likely to be attacked. It keeps your town safe. It makes your property values go up. And then if anybody ever needs our assistance, then we're ready to provide that for the right money to help protect them. And so all of this money, human health, improvement research, natural medicines, and always safety third. I mean, King President Godfather, Chief Chant Vinci, the champ, the king, mayor, president of the United States. We're going to rise everybody up. You can't have elections and lose half your talent at the election booth and then lose half your people in your town just because they decided to not use everyone. It's a new idea. It's a new format. It makes us stronger. I'm your King President Godfather, Chief Champ Vinci, and this is your video message.